All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from a very, very sunny San Diego, a bit of a heat wave right now. And today I am joined by Neil, Neil Patrick Rogers, who is in Nashua, New Hampshire, on the other side of the country. How are you doing, Neil? I'm doing great, John. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. And Neil's been in sales since graduating college, which looks like it's only a, like a few years ago now. Um, and uh, you took this path after discovering your passion for servicing people as a bartender. Uh, for the past 27 years, you've been in the swag promo marketing business with your um, wife as your business partner. Uh, and you just launched, a, I think, a fascinating book, <laughs> Bar tips, everything I needed to know in sales, I learned behind the bar. Um, and as I was saying before we came on air, everything I've forgotten about anything, I forgot being in front of a bar, but that's another story for another time. Okay. Uh, so, Neil, let's get let's get um, straight into it. First of all, um, what, what, is it, what is it about bartending in particular that you really feel like, because, you know, when you tend to bar, you, you do... You do um, come across let's face it life's rich tapestry and all its technicolor glory right so yes, um, so what are some of the things you know what are some of the things that you immediately learned when you first started bartending or you noticed well i the first thing i mean what you notice is is you know just the whole process of getting to know somebody or getting to know their desires i mean they're coming in to shake off a little bit of the work day or 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 maybe a weekend away or the the husband and wife going out, getting to know them a little bit with the, you know, with the simple proper greeting and doing a little probing into what they might be doing and what they might be interested in that night. So it's very similar. I, if I pick one thing out of the gate, that's, and, and of course you want to make that great first impression as we do in sales. Mm -hmm. So, and that, that sets the tone for the rest of the relationship. Now that relationship is going to, going to be, two hours you know mm -hmm. we've got relationships that are 30 years old and they all started in that fashion so i think that it, if my biggest takeaway it, it's that the second is that the one that comes right off the top of my head is the ability to absorb and, and as it relates to sales the the ability to absorb criticism you know mm -hmm. to uh if something goes wrong whose fault is it well the old adage is the customer's always right and i do believe that so you've got to point to yourself and say, okay, how, what was my role in this and how could I have I done better? And how can I, how can I provide these people with a solution, which is exactly what we need to do in sales. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, off the top, that's, that, those, those yeah. would be two, two of the big ones. Yeah. Let me, let me come back to your first one about making the first impression because you know, I, I, I agree with that, but I think one of the things is if you going back to your, to your bar analogy, like if you walk into the bar and the bar person greets you, you know, looks over, all of that kind of stuff. And, you know, you feel acknowledged and then they come and do all of that. If you walk into a bar and the guys or the gal is there on their phone and they're like finished reading whatever they do and then kind of look up and go, oh, yeah, I'll be with you in a second. That's a that's a very different that's a very different impression. And yeah. I think that idea of being present is something that people struggle with nowadays. Well, they do because we're 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 forever got our faces in our phones and um, in, in live in this digital world. I live in an, an alternative universe. I'm a, I'm an old school guy. I I, I want to. I, I unfortunately we haven't been able to have the appointments, the in person appointments that we used to have. Um, they're starting to come back a little bit more. But yeah, I believe that they're they're missing something, and and, the, and one of the reasons why I wrote the book, I think these things are blocking and tackling issues that I outline. And how do you how do you not want to you know give somebody proper greeting? And what I what I would challenge any 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 reader or anybody that comes to a seminar that I that I provide is that here's the thing I would try every day when you go for, for your walk take your dog out whoever however however may go out with your wife at night your husband whatever it may be and say hello to everyone you meet now you're not going to bat a thousand but you're going to get some great feel you're going to get some great response because everybody's feeling the same way everybody wants to be acknowledged and you're going to feel real good about that so why don't we start that relationship off with when somebody comes walking into the bar the restaurant wherever it may be, and just say hello 
acknowledge their existence, look for that feedback, their immediate feedback, because they're coming in to have a good time. You're turning them off by, by, by not acknowledging them. And one of the things that I all it's in the overarching. So if you want to go into the golden rule, right? Yep. The ones others, correct? Yes. Uh, I have adages that I associate with each one of the, the chapters, but how would I feel if I walked into a restaurant and bar and nobody acknowledged me? You know, I'm sitting here and, and the person's walking by, they're barely making eye contact because they've got other things on their mind or, uh, or they're busy. If you're busy, that's okay too. And we all understand that, especially yeah. people like us that are business people. Stop for a moment, just say, hey, hang on one second. I just got to take care of one other thing and I'll be right with you. How's everything yeah. going? Great. I'll be right back with you. Some simple thing, uh, some simple, simple response. And we yeah. see it today. We see it a lot of today, you know, when um, in emailing and digital, digital communication. It's like, you did you get my email? I've got to like, follow up to make sure you got my email. And this yeah. isn't with customers, this is with vendors, with other people, because I never challenge the customers. I'm still, mm -hmm. I'm still believe in <laughs> they're always right. Yeah, it's it's it is it is a is it is a fascinating thing that you know that we have in some ways taken bad some bad habits you know from the physical world into the digital world and yeah I mean that's an that that, that it's an interesting one too is like because nowadays we don't really know what you know what the what the proper reaction is what the proper response time is all of that kind of thing so we're we're a little bit uh, we're a little bit all over the place I think when it comes to that. And I also think people are so kind of distracted today and all of that is that even, even the way they communicate can be confusing. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. So, um, so when you, um, so, uh, when you started to write this book, right. Mm -hmm. Um, what was one of the things that even surprised yourself about it? What came out that surprised you? That I could write a book. <laughs> Good. <laughs> right. Um, I wasn't a stellar student. I, um, I uh, took me a couple of couple of swings at bat to get it right and to understand what I could do. Um, the um, I, I, when I when I when you know now that it's been published, I had to go reread it. Right, and I'm rereading. I'm like going to my wife and go, you know, this is really kind of good. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, so I think that would be the that and and how 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 easily once I got into the process and plus it was a COVID project, right? Mm -hmm. and so who wasn't looking for something to keep themselves from losing their mind? I know. I mean, it, to me, it was a godsend. I would call old you know, people that I had worked with, uh, restaurant restaurant owners, bartenders that I worked with, other servers that I worked with, and just pick their brain. Hey, here's what I'm thinking about. Here's the ten things, ten to twelve things. That I think were things that were that that were that we learned or that we practiced in 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 the restaurant business, in the hospitality business, for me specifically behind the bar, and how I think they line up with how I've been successful in sales, mm -hmm. and none of it, zero of it, is some complex marketing theory that involves AI or anything else. Yeah. Um, t talk to me a bit about one one of the chapters I see here is um, the import. Uh, sorry, the most organized wins, uh, and and let's face it, you know we know a lot of uh, we know a lot of people sometimes in sales can get a little scattered. Well, I think that that leaves with an awful impression, right? So, in, in your preparation for what you're going to do, so you take Tia's. Tia's is one of the restaurants that I worked at. Mm -hmm. And Tia's was a high flying place, very busy Friday nights. I also say if you haven't worked the H station at Tia's on a busy Friday night in Boston, you haven't tended bar yet because <laughs> it's crazy. Right. <laughs> but here's 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 the savior. They prepared. They knew they had experience. They had this is this place is across the street from Daniel Hall Marketplace which mm -hmm. used to be one of the busiest places in Boston. And that's all moved now to the seaport. And uh, they had played these, these people that own Tia's own those own, own a couple of places over there. So they had experience. So they set up the bar. So you barely had to move. Mm. Right. So over here, you had all your taps, right. 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 Within um, in this one station, then all your bottles were in front of you for the, for the well drinks. 
and then all your call liquors were in slanted racks to your right. Mm. So you, to this day, I can tell you what were there, wow. how they were lined up. I can tell you how much they cost. And it's all because they prepared to be busy. So when I first started in sales, I, 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 it was in, it was in the food business. So I was going in and out of every kitchen in Boston and the surrounding area and hotels. If you know anything about chefs, they don't have any time for you. And they no. certainly don't want to give any time to the new guy that's coming <laughs> in to try to take business from somebody else that they've been doing with for a hundred years. But you kill them with kindness, this, that, and the other thing you show up, you show up prepared, you leave them samples, you be nice, you don't intrude on their day. And and when you do get that shot, you've got all the information you need. So what I would do simply, again, not in a digital world back mm -hmm. then at all, I had a little binder set up. And in the binder, I had my produce prices and my meat prices and my um, specials. And then anything else that came, 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 you know, anything that was on deal for me. So I knew which, which case, which, which products I was getting extra commission on. That wasn't to push it on them. It was to to know about it, at least mention it. How's your bottle ketchup today? Right. Right. So now we're talking about a restaurant, you know, McDonald's asking them, would you like the fries? Mm -hmm. So it's simple, it's a simple upsell. And mm -hmm. but I, but I'm not getting that time with that guy or gal if I come in with papers all over the place and look in a mess. Yeah, yeah. And I think and I think that's one of the things uh that, that I really think is uh, people overlook nowadays is that whole preparation part because i often say to I, I often ask people especially you know people in sales um, and sales managers and that and i go okay um show me on your calendar your prep time where's your prep time right and they say oh well no and i'm 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 good like i know what i need you know i do this over and over you know and all of that and you think okay i wonder if you there's, there's a huge correlation between preparing and success right <laughs> Right. Um, but but people still overlook it, and I think now in a in a in a digital world, sometimes even overlook it even more because they think, oh, it's easy. I fire off this thing, I point them here, I do this, and then almost you're almost outsourcing the work to your to your prospect, giving them an errand. We don't yeah. want to give them errands. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's I, our job to take them there. Understand, you know. So then you're just going through your whole process. If you just, I mean, sending them places it leaves you pretty vulnerable. I would say. Yeah, no, absolutely. And and the, the, the other thing, too, that, uh, you know, you mentioned it in, in one of your chapters is the whole concept of time management. And again, I think this is something that people have lost the art of time management uh, because we think we're so efficient now and we've got all these tools and all of that is uh, we all. And I think people end up, as I said earlier, end up more scattered and wasting more time because they don't focus on the concept of time management even. Yeah, I mean, um, well, first off, and and again, another old adage, you know, well, one of the things, you know, be on time. Mm -hmm. Number one, you know, be on time. And you know what, you know what on time is? That's 15 minutes early. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Right. Yep. We all know that. Why why are we back to back and whatnot and waiting and we're waiting on Zooms for other people or and that type of thing? But um, but yeah, if if you're if you're if, if you're not if you're not prepared, you know having having time you know setting you're getting in the goals in, in your goal setting, you know you, are you setting goals? Are you, are you are you then prioritizing those goals for the day or the week or the month or the year? You know, are you, and then if those things that you shouldn't be doing, do you have people that could be doing them for you? And then you, do you have the do you have the ability to then jump in anywhere and multitask? You know, so all that's done through time management. But most importantly, in my in my belief, in my in what I mean about time management matters, you show good, you show respect for your client, customer, whatever you whatever whatever we call them these days. We happen to call ours clients now. You show them respect by showing up on time, mm -hmm. showing up on time, being prepared, organized, all those things, being good with a, 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 an, an initial greeting. Don't take too much time on it. Let's let's make sure that we are here for for business. Mm -hmm. But you know, let's let's create a familiar um, familiar relationship. Yeah, no, I'm, absolutely, and I and I think that that's a that's such a critical point. And I think you can't do that unless you prepare properly and you have everything ready. That way, you can start off 
on the right foot. Um, you also mentioned situational awareness, and I think that's a that's a fascinating um, uh, term. Can you uh, just uh, expand on that in in terms of situational anal- situational awareness in sales? So, as an example, so I, I always like to give the, yeah. the the restaurant, the bar version, and whatnot. In the bar version, I still can tell who the crazies are. <laughs> To this day, I know who to stay away from. Right. Right. The other thing, so the other thing is, is that when people come in in groups, there's always a leader. Somebody brought them there. Who's Mm -hmm. the leader? Who's going to order the drinks? Who's going to, who's going to be, and that leader typically, in my experience, is the one that has respect for your time. Right. Mm -hmm. So they're making sure, come on, get your order ready. Let's get this thing going. Come on. This guy's got to go. He look how busy he is. That's your leader. So that's that. And then you then back to the bad guys, you know who the bad guys are. So you want to alert the management. If somebody seems to be a little over the rails, maybe a little mm-hmm. rambunctious, we tell them about that. We make sure that the, the doorman knows that mm, we might have a situation here. Same thing in a boardroom. Who's the leader? Yep. Who, who's nodding as we're talking, which is one of the one of the things that I'm missing desperately from Zooms and whatnot. Body language is, yep. is is not is non-existent, you know. Mm-hmm. Zooms, um, you could be the feel like the you know we're getting along famously, and <laughs> then you get ghosted for two weeks. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it's just about you know what, what and what's the temperature of the room? What is what, what you know? What is uh, what what's the conversation like going back and forth? So it's just being it's observational. Mm-hmm. Really, is all what it is, and uh, yeah think in those types of things that you learned, you know, in the hospitality business help out dramatically. Yeah, no, I, I would say so. And yeah, I agree. I mean, it's a little bit more difficult when you're um, when you're virtual uh, to get some of those cues. The, the last one I wanted to ask you about that really fascinates me here is um, growing your business with positive activity. What do you mean by that? So positive activity has been for the last 10 years, my uh, well, actually, now I say ten. Uh, it's fifteen or so. In two thousand eight, we were in. You know, it was a tough time, right, for most of us, right, in marketing yep. and whatnot and sales. Um, and uh, we were worried about what was going on. We had a couple of kids in school and and whatnot. Where's the? And we're we're you know we're independent business people. Where's the? Where's the? Uh, where are the payments going to come from? Where are we going to get? And so instead of uh, we, my, my wife happened to go to. Um, a, a seminar with my daughter who just recently came off a head end uh, a, a career he was she was a division one lacrosse player and had a a, a a career ending ending head injury so she was getting into mindful behaviors and really trying to heal herself so my wife went to the 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 show the the little um show up here at the hotel and found all these you know mindful behaviors and and whatnot and what happened to with that started reading up on it and discovered a book called the happiness advantage by uh sean acor which is a phenomenal book um the the four agreements all these all these types of uh mindful books and um, started putting them into practice and so that's the positive part of act the activity so the ditty that goes along with positive so that's the first that's the front end and that's so the the ditty that goes along with positive activity is it's the practice, right? Because nobody's perfect. Yep. Of getting your mindset right to put you in a place of positivity, which then can put you in a place where you're positioned to have divergent thinking, creativity, which brings positive pro- productivity. Mm. And uh, we say that we say also that that activity that you do, and you do this on a daily basis, and you do these practices, you do them over ninety days. It has a multiplier effect that you just won't even know that's happening till you look back on where you came from, and it's all positive. So you never, you know, so you never, you never worried about the next. Where's that sale come? Why didn't they get back to me? You just keep rolling. So there's practices that go along with the positive. About four or five things, you know, uh, meditation, gratitude practice. I'm sure this is not foreign. You probably heard them a million times from other people. Um, uh, moving your body. Conscious, conscious acts of kindness, and then on the business development side, 
we have a process where we take people through. One of the things is, do you, can you even, and these are things that I've been doing for the last 37 years. Um, it's just, have you identified who can buy what you sell? Right. Do you have a benefit statement? Do you have, do you, can you tell anybody about this in a one sheeter in a 15 minute coffee, meet, coffee meeting? Do you know who your customer, once you've discovered who your customer is, who build your list. The group you know, the group you the group you, you meet, the group you buy. Then you have to have campaigns, seven touch campaigns associated with each of those th those uh, list uh, uh, listing services, not service, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, and so, and then you then that's your process. So you're going to send these touches, and they're going to you're going to you you met somebody at a chamber event. Don't be surprised when they gave you their card and they're interested in what, what you do. Well, guess what? Don't be surprised if you call them the next day and they don't call you back. Yeah. You got to get them in process. So the yeah. whole, that's the whole, so that's the positive activity. The whole piece of it is that you get your mindset right so you can do all these types of activities and stay, stay focused on them and not be worried about whether somebody called you back, whether you got the order yet, where the business is coming from. You just remain in a positive, happy state. Yeah, no, I I think that that's such a that that's such a great uh, that, that's such a great outline of it because I do believe that people need to do more of this because otherwise we start off the day with social media with news that's not meant to inform; it's just meant to provoke right. reactions and all of this and you all this negative stuff going in your head. So actually focusing on on the positive, I think is is and and going through a process like that, I think is incredibly important. And we, we, we've so just uh, by by no fault of our own, we lost a million three client last year. They imploded. Um, they went out at seventeen dollars in July and we're tra trading under a buck in, in January. It was just the end of it. But because we put it, we went back to our process. You know, we we've now we've made about half of it back. Wow, you see that 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 that's such a great, 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 uh, great example. Um, so listen, thanks again, Neil. Neil's information will be below this video. And just to remind you again, the book is called Bar Tips: Everything I Needed to Know About Sales I Learned from Behind the Bar. Available on Amazon and all good, all good book retailers. I encourage you to go check it out. Um, but before we go, uh, Neil, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. So currently we're in the, we've been for the last 27 years, we've been in the swag business. We do, we, well, we, you know, swag, tchotchkes, giveaways, whatever you want to call them, but we take it seriously. We, mm -hmm. we, we believe it's an incredible advertising media. If used properly, you know, um, it, it put, it gives incredible amount of impressions at, at a very low cost per impression, um, rate. So it's, mm -hmm. uh, and nobody it's the only advertising that somebody's going to thank you for yes yes that's very true very true so i encourage you as i said all neil's information will be below here so please go check it out listen neil thank you for today thank you for watching and listening see you all again very soon thank, thank you thank you john